it's a long way up to this uh, great glimpse. But thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And um, what I'm going to try and do in a few minutes is to uh, look back on those uh, early days and try and draw one or two lessons um, at the end. <clears throat> My chequered history is that uh, I was a member of Margaret Thatcher's cabinet for 10 years in the 1980s. Um, I then uh, went on uh, to do various jobs in opposition. Now I'm the speaker in the House of Lords. Uh, but of course, the important part of my uh, career uh, was between 1981 and 87, when I was in charge of the Department of Health and Social Security. And it's looking back on those health years that I would like to concentrate. What's my main memory? I will leave out the disputes inside the health service, which did actually take a vast amount of time, which I will come back to. But my main conclusion was just how difficult it was to promote good health and prevent bad health and worse. And in a way, my main example of this was the AIDS campaign of 1986-87. You will remember more than anyone that this was a time when there was no treatment, uh, no antiretroviral drugs, no vaccine. If you contracted HIV, it was a virtual uh, death sentence. There had never been a time when it was more compelling to warn the public of the dangers, because we could at least warn those who had not been affected. That was something which was open to us. In the Department of Health, I had the enormous help of Don Latchison, the Chief Medical um, Officer, and together we devised our campaign. The response of Her Majesty's Treasury uh, was uh, uh, frankly altogether typical. They were prepared for the campaign to go ahead, which was good of them, but only on the understanding that there were no extra funds from the Treasury. Their belief was that uh, uh, prevention campaigns had little influence, or at least that was their excuse. So I was left searching the department uh, for uh, replacement funds uh, to, frankly, uh, to try to save uh, lives. So that was the uh, beginning um, of it all. Uh, and it was not the only obstacle. The question obviously then came, what to say in the campaign? Our judgment was that it needed to be straightforward and hard-hitting. A campaign that did not uh, pull its punches, but a campaign that people saw, uh, remembered, and were influenced uh, by. But that was not everybody's idea. There was a feeling amongst many politicians, but not all, um, that, what will our supporters think of this? Won't they be offended? And that certainly was the message transmitted by uh, the Prime Minister. Having uh, seen a mock-up of one of the first adver ad advertisements, she wrote to me saying, do we have to have the section on risky sex? Yeah. As that was what we were warning against, um, the answer to that was yes, uh, we did, otherwise there wasn't too much point, I mean, having a <laughs> That, as you might, might imagine, did not stop the Prime Minister, Mrs. Thatcher. When she saw the full advertisement, her private secretary wrote, the Prime Minister has emphasised that she still remains against certain parts of the advertisement. She thinks that anxiety on the part of parents and many teenagers who would never be in danger of AIDS would exceed the good which the advertisement might do. In her view, it would be better to follow the uh, VD, the venereal disease precedent, of putting notices in doctors' surgeries, public lavatories, etc. But to place advertisements in newspapers which every young person could read and learn from practices they never knew about uh, would, in her view, uh, do great harm. <laughs> there was an implicit assumption in this uh, that, uh, I mean, living aside the um, ideas of publicity, uh, there was an implicit, implicit assumption that young people who had seen what was a warning would do precisely the opposite and go out and be encouraged uh, to have uh, unprotected sex. And frankly, that was very soon shown to be uh, complete nonsense. It 
It's also uh, my view, not particularly revolution, I suggest, that communications have rather moved on since notices in public lavatories. <laughs> we went ahead with the uh, television and radio adverts, and you'll remember uh, John Hurt and his voice, you'll remember the posters, Don't Die of Ignorance, which we put up um, all around the country, and we sent a leaflet to every um, household um, in the country. Uh, but, but that did not entirely still the argument inside government. Lord Hailsham, who was a very great man, grand old man of the cabinet, objected to the words we had used. We had talked in one advertisement about people, quote, having sex. Hailsham said, I am convinced that there must be some limit to vulgarity and illiteracy. <laughs> sex means that you are either male or female. It does not mean something, the same thing as sexual practice. Nor does having sex mean anything at all. <laughs> so we were being shot at from uh, uh, um, behind, uh, but there were others um, shooting um, uh, very forcibly from in front. Uh, the religious leaders, uh, notably the chief rabbi, for example, who expressed the doubts of very many, I have to say, in the religious community, uh, of all religions, uh, albeit in colourful language. The campaign, he said, breeds a false sense of security not to mention false values. In effect, it encourages promiscuity by advertising. Introducing so many children and decent young people, ideas of sex outside of marriage entirely unknown to them. It tells people not what is right, but how to do wrong and get away. Like sending people into a contaminated atmosphere, but providing them with gas masks and protective clothing. That wasn't quite actually what we had in mind. <laughs> uh, um, and it was stirring stuff. And there were many people who agreed with it. And there were many religious leaders, I regret to say, who uh, agreed uh, with it. And who agreed with uh, his last comment, which was, say plainly, AIDS is a consequence of marital infidelity, premarital adventures, sexual deviation, and social irresponsibility putting pleasure before duty and discipline. But you know, in the First World War, Britain had tried what might be termed a moral message uh, to the troops who were going um, on leave. And you will be less surprised than many to know that it didn't work. Any more than John Major's Back to Basics uh, campaign worked in the 1990s. And that was because it was exploded by the first minister who went on manoeuvres outside marriage. It was a sure, sure uh, recipe uh, for getting it wrong. My conclusion was that the public would respond to good practical advice given by people who had a claim to be respected, people like Donald Atchison, the chief medical officer. They were not likely to respond to a moral message uh, put forward uh, by a, a government minister. That is not obviously to say that we wish to put forward an immoral message, anything but. But that should not have been the number one aim of what we were doing um, in the uh, campaign itself. So we went forward on a kind of slightly uh, different um, aspect. Um, we uh, looked at the position uh, and um, uh, we put forward a campaign, sometimes criticised as being um, too urgent, um, too black and white perhaps, uh, but in fact it was something which in my view uh, worked, but I will say that in a moment. What is often ignored is another aspect of AIDS and HIV um, at the time, which was caused and still is caused by drug users sharing needles. Again, there was no doubt about the impact that had, but there was a real question on what should be done about it. Taking nar narcotic drugs was illegal, and thus it was argued that providing clean needles to drug users was condoning crime. There were many who took that view. There were many inside the cabinet who took that view. Our view, the team that was uh, trying to put this campaign forward, was that saving lives took precedence. 
And that was the view which just squeaked through the special cabinet committee on AIDS, which had been set up under the chairmanship of uh, Willie Whitelaw, who was uh, one of the um, uh, heroes of this particular time. It squeaked through, uh, but only just squeaked through. But the effect of that was that infection from shared needles came down dramatically and remains down um, over the last decade. And so, ladies and gentlemen, what is my conclusion, or what are my conclusions uh, from that experience? Very briefly, I would say there were three. First, I would claim that the results justified our approach. The rate of HIV in Britain went down much faster uh, than our European neighbours, and other sexual diseases reduced uh, also. The public did take notice of what, and we all remember, young people in particular uh, took notice. I've given a pound for everyone who's come up to me to say how much notice they took of it. Uh, by a big, very rich man um, indeed. And was the public offended? We did a follow-up survey. It showed that over 90% um, of the public approved of what we had done. I don't think we should ever underestimate the sheer common sense of the British public of uh, whatever some of the commentators uh, might, uh, might think and might allege. Second, the campaign and the activities that surrounded it showed just what the National Health Service could achieve when it worked together. We received nothing but support. We had dedicated the dedicated care of nurses, doctors, consultants, working on a disease for which there is no cure and no antiretroviral drugs. And the strain on such staff um, was immense and could be seen to be immense. I saw that strain not only in the United Kingdom, not only in hospitals here, but also in San Francisco, in Amsterdam uh, and Berlin. So if you want heroes from that time, um, it was they who were the undoubted heroes uh, in the struggle against AIDS. And third, and perhaps most important because we are just looking back at this moment, we need to look forward as well. There are big battles still to be fought. Governments of all colours have to accept that any policy affecting sexual disease will have its opponents. It's a simple rule of politics. It is not a natural, naturally popular cause. Perhaps that was the reason for the caution in this country and delay on introducing PrEP, encouraging promiscuity and all that. My advice to any government of any colour is beware of the public relations men uh, in this area. I won't say they always get it wrong, but they do get it wrong quite often. Just do what is right and what the medical advice uh, and evidence points to. And God knows there are enough issues facing any government in this area. Encouraging people to take tests is an obvious one which we have been pursuing uh, for some time. Fighting stigma uh, remains um, a basic um, issue um, for all of us and none of us can be uh, happy with some of the evidence that is there on hate crimes uh, and the rest and the way that, that those have uh, accelerated in recent years and not gone down. And then facing up to the issue of older people who have survived and now face a series of problems which a recent Terence Higgins Trust report um, identified, ranging from a sense of isolation to concern over taking care of themselves in the future, with the report stating that over 50s living with HIV had on average three times as many long-term health conditions compared with the general population. We're just coming to uh, terms, or grips, uh, with that particular issue. And as governments face up to those issues at home, perhaps I can say that this, let them also contribute generously to the even more serious issues in too many countries overseas, where those who suffer from HIV are persecuted and prosecuted by their governments. We know that around the world, over 
one and a half million men, women and children are newly infected each year with HIV. Newly infected. About eight million people are infected with the HIV but do not know that that is the case. And over 750,000 people a year die uh, from AIDS. Let us pray then that we can help tackle these issues with some of the same dedication and determination that those nurses, doctors and consultants gave back uh, in, uh, gave to us in the 1980s. What is different today is that we do have the drugs, we do have the means. The challenge, it seems to me, is that the means and the drugs are now used uh, even more effectively around the world. Thank you very much.